Welcome along once again to the uh, Cardiff City phone-in. Two games against the relegation threatened sides in the in the last few days. Both major rivals of ours actually over the years as well in, in Birmingham and Millwall and mixed results. Our special guest on the show tonight is Cohen Griffith. So Cohen, thanks very much uh, for coming on the show again. The nice touch with the Welsh flag above your head there. That's a <laughs> nice one, yeah. Great to have you on the show. Good to see you. Thank you for that. Thank you very much for the invite. And uh, Peter Bradbury is back with us uh, tonight. Hi, Pete. Hi, Steve. How are you? How are yeah, you? I'm all right. It's a real pleasure to be with Cohen. Real, like he's a, he was a hero of mine when I was just a kid growing up. Yeah. You, we, we, I know you, you've got plenty to ask him about. We'll, 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 uh, and I'll, I'll go to you in, in a second because we, we can start with a little bit of that before we go to the, the other stuff. So, Steve, uh, you, you, were you at Millwall and Birmingham? I was, yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, we'll again. I'll come back. I'll come back to you on this as well about those about those games. Uh, the, I'll just ask you one thing before I go back to Pete. Um, three one. Did that? Did that? Was that? Was that flattering to Millwall? Was that third goal? Was it? It was an argument. It might have been offside. I thought. I thought, I thought the uh, the first half, although we were two one down, we we were slightly the better team. Uh, Millwall had taken the lead again. Both both the goals in the first half uh, were, were down to our frailties, I think, rather than anything good that Millwall did. We got back uh, got back to one all with a with a, an, a, a yet another set piece goal, and we'd actually played quite well. I think um, yeah. um, Nat Nat Phillips had had a really good chance to get us get us to two one, uh, but then uh, it, it was an added time at the end of the game. We didn't clear the ball properly. We were all out of position. Ball got played to the far post, and the Millwall player volleyed it in on the far post. The second half, though, we didn't do anything. Um, yeah. I have to say, I'm, I'm biased as heck, as you know. Um, I have to say that we didn't deserve anything out of that game the way the, way the second half half went. I wouldn't okay. say it's completely different to um, trips to Millwall back in the day. The first time I went there was 1982. We won 4-0 at the old den. Still locked in the ground an hour after the end of the game. Um, on Saturday, I went with my son. We just walked straight out and straight, uh -huh. straight off. It was it was it was it was a different world. Um, on, on the other hand, Bur Birmingham uh, was mm. was a very good performance. We we, we deserved that win. Yeah. Ironically, just after the uh, most of the away end had been calling for uh, Josh Bowler to be taken off. Um, and, yeah, he took his goal really well. It was a great one too, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Again, I think it kind of the last two games have kind of summed up our season. We're in eleventh place, and I think we are where we deserve to be yeah. because um, we have been hugely inconsistent. There have been some tremendous. Um, there, there've been there've been a few highs this season, comparatively speaking. Uh, particularly the, uh, the the win against Ipswich, of course, Swan, with the, the two Swan two vehicle. goals at the time. Um, mm. the, the 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 home derby wins against Swansea, and particularly I particularly enjoyed the, the Bristol game, Bristol City, the yeah. fantastic goal by by Ruben, and of yeah. course um, uh, the four 0 win at Huddersfield just after the Bristol game. There have been some highs, but I'm not going to I'm not going to drag everybody down by the by the lows. Cohen mentioned a couple of the uh, home games that have left a lot to be desired um, before mm. we came on air. Um, it's been. I think they say we are we we are where we deserve to be. We're in the middle because we've we've been a bit of a curate's egg and there's some yeah. good, good and bad parts, but an improvement on the last couple of seasons, I think. Uh, and and you're very diplomatic and generally very positive, and your glass is normally half <laughs> half full. So I'm sure, I'm sure other fans who travelled like you do may have, different, may have stronger things to say. Um, the tea selection needs to be debated, Steve. I yeah, think. actually, Honestly, yeah, we, I, I, bring... I, I, want, I want to raise that because I yeah. the last twenty minutes against Birmingham. I thought we saw what Cardiff should be. We had David Turnbull playing deep. I agree with Ashford. you. We had Ashford on the on, out wide. Yeah. Ruben Colwell was Ian given Ashford a, looked great as well, didn't he? Yeah. Ruben Colwell was given a free ball. Ashford was fantastic last 30 minutes. And and I thought that he missed a real opportunity against Millwall because I've watched the, the 90 minutes today in preparation for this because I was at Cairo versus Ponte Dawi on Saturday. Big match. Um, it was a brilliant match. Kyra won, and um, you know, one of my teams always win, and one of them always loses. And it, Kyra got the victory this week. But it, but the the, the problem. I was I was furious at about two o'clock at, at Kyra Football Club, looking at team selection and seeing that we're not. You know, unless you throw these kids in when there's nothing to play for and give them an opportunity, how will you know? If they're good enough going into going into what is a big season next year, should, should and I, have... I think we should talk about that at length yeah. later. I just want to say, Pete, and I don't mean to interrupt you. Just thinking it might be a good way to bring Cohen in. I mean, and Cohen hasn't been doesn't get to that many city games uh, these 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 days. Yeah, 
but but we, we hope he goes less because every time he goes we lose but and you know that's a lot of ravages this season isn't it really but uh Cole, what's, your, what's your take on um i wonder if you've got any memories about that you know bringing in youngsters giving kids a chance so uh, what's your what's your take on that well it's got to be done obviously at some stage um you know, uh, Pete just said about uh, giving them a, uh, the youngsters a, a chance when there's nothing to play for. But it seems to me, and I, I, like I say, I'm on the outside a little bit for, as a as a City fan and on the forums and stuff. But it, it seems that there's always something to play for um, for the manager. You know, if people are calling for him to to go, or I don't like this, I don't like that, or whatever it might be, perhaps yeah. he's feeling under pressure. That oh I need a result for this so you're not gonna let uh, t you know yeah. take a risk on the youngsters unless you know you know I've got a free hand on this one. Do, do you remember any times when you when you were playing um, any any you know youngsters who who played uh, who went on to do well or do you remember any really young players coming in? I remember um, well for Cardiff now um, when Lee Badley made his oh, his right, debut. Yeah. Um, we were it was something like Gillingham away, and uh, they had a big centre forward. Oh, I can't even remember his it was name. Leo, Colin, wasn't it? Colin? Leo. Huh? Was it Leo? Leo? The Fortune West? No, no. It was. I was thinking something like a Olcott or something like that. But yeah. a big centre forward anyway, well known for putting himself about. And I remember looking at Bads after bat. 15 minutes and he'd already got blood all over him and everything like that and i said yeah yeah I'd rather you than me marking him sort of stuff you know but um yeah, yeah. um but, well there's a few who 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 uh you know made really good debuts given a bit of a chance you know i remember when wiggy uh came in yeah. Yeah. um and you know he was a storm center mid midfield i don't know you know a dream debut and and then the next thing you know is like Stoke were, wanted to sign him, didn't they, and things like that. And or well, that was the talk anyway. Don't know how true it was, and um, but nothing came from that. And then before you know what's happened, you know, that could have been the, that could have been his career. Yeah, I mean the the point about um, I bring Pete back in on a second. Sorry, Peter, interrupt you just to say. Uh, Cohen, you know, they talk about, you know, um, you never win anything with kids, that old chestnut. Can't remember who said it now, but it's a very famous quote. And then you see the Liverpool game in the cup when they played a whole bunch of kids, they have the audacity to look great, you know. Um, I mean, obviously they've got a different standard of, of kids, but you know, if if you if you if you're good enough, for, you know, if if you if you if you're good enough, for, you're in, aren't you? You know, it doesn't matter how young you are, does it? No, I think if you are, if you you know, if you're um good enough, then you're old enough. I think yeah. you know the, the the situation with Klopp is though that if he had played all those youngsters and they had lost, nobody would have been calling for his job. They would have said, "Oh, he's just giving the youngsters a break or whatever yeah. it might be, trying to give give them experimenting." Fair enough. I don't yeah. know. I don't know if the Cardiff, Cardiff manager's got that luxury to do that. Well, he funny. hasn't. He hasn't, and that's half the issue. The, the, the fact that they have it, I'm sure Steve will have a view on this. The, the fact that Club have not said whether Errol Bullock will be here next season, I think is a lot of the reason in as to why he isn't giving these kids a game. I think if he had a contract and he was, and he knew he was back next year, we would be seeing more of Ashford, probably a little bit of Joel Carwell as well as Ruben. I think that is half the problem. Um, and... Um, I think the board have got. To, I, I think the board have got to make a decision on Errol, Steve. I don't know what um, Steve T Thomas thinks, but I, they've got to make a decision. It's now hindering every bit of preparation for the, not just these last three games, but the season as well. Um, going uh, next next season as well. It can't be good for the players not knowing who the manager is going to be next year and who's going to be making decisions on their future. Steve, do you want to respond to that? Yeah, I do. I do want to pick up on what Cohen said. Though I think you hit the nail on the head, Cohen, when you said about the, the, the manager, um, the manager needing to, uh, to basically sell himself because if he's not going to be there next season, his CV is going to look better if we got more points and we're higher up the table. Yeah. He can point to the fact that we finished eleventh rather than thirteenth, fourteenth. It's going to be better for his CV. But I think you're right as well, Peter, that he's not going to um, be blood in the youngsters if if he thinks he's got a better chance of getting get, getting us higher up the table at the end. I think that, that it does come back, as you say, Pete, to the fact that he's not been given a um, 
a decision on what's happening to him next season, which isn't very good for anybody. It's not not good for us. It's not good for the uh, not good for the players. It's not good for certainly not good for Errol. I don't know whether Cohen, you want to respond to that. I don't know whether you whether you've been in that kind of circumstance. I'll put it maybe slightly differently. I'm sure you've been in this circumstance, uh, maybe even during your time at Cardiff, where you kind of know the manager might be on the way out, you know, and you're like you're under contract. You're looking to next season, and you know, I mean, it it must filter through to the players, mustn't it? Yeah, I think so. But you know, at the at the end of the day, you're going out there. You you've got a job to do. I mean, I know when I'm going out to 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 play a match, I'm not thinking will the manager be there next week or um, or will I be there next week. You know, you're going out there and you're concentrating for ninety minutes or however long it is on on that on on that team and and on that performance, and then everything else will fall in, into place. Um, you, you can only affect what you can affect, really. So yes. um, it never really, I, I never looked into it that deep. Deep. I just used to try and go out and, and, and do as well for myself and for the team and everything else as I could. And then the other things will fall into place anyway. You, you see, job, yeah, uh, Steve, one season, Eddie yeah. May started as manager, then Terry Yorov came in and then Eddie May ended as manager. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, like... It, you played for us, Cohen, during some of the most biggest basket case times that we were ever in, I think. Um, yeah. so, so it was good you had that attitude. Oh, Clemo, we Clemo, Kumar, Ricky Wright. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, I was going to say to, you know, uh, Pete, to, to back your point, saying I was going to say, you know, Cohen, you can just, t- you know, you've got a real kind of laid back kind of way about you. Um, and you don't seem the kind of person to get kind of irate and 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 wound up. So maybe that stuff, maybe it, maybe it, maybe it didn't affect you in that way. Um, do you do you, you not without you know naming any instances? Were you aware any times any football clubs you played for, for at when there was like you know the the manager had sort of lost had lost the the, the the team a bit? You know, does that does that, um, does that happen? Is that really a thing? Yeah, I think I think it it is. Yeah, I think it is a thing. Um, I um, I'm trying to think. For for me, um, majority of managers had uh, the backing of the of the team for most of the time. And you know what it's like if you if the manager's there and he's playing you, then you, you're going to say, well, he's not too bad. You know, yeah, um, yeah. the the ones who who tend to have the gripe are the ones who aren't playing. Um, and, you know, fortunately for me, uh, I was involved most of the time. I think the only time I wasn't involved as much and I was even I was still on the bench was when uh, uh, Yorth was there. You know, he, he used to leave me out occasionally. Yeah. Um, or I wasn't um, starting matches anyway when, when uh, Terry Yorth was there. But generally, no. if I was fit, I would be involved. Can I ask you a really straightforward question, right? And, uh, and it's interesting because... Uh, 92, 93, and all the rest of it. You know, so going back 30 years ago, you know, even like Steve shirt pays, pays testament to that. Yeah. <laughs> you got the shirt on for you, Cohen, yeah? Thank but, you very much. I've dug it out. It doesn't come out often, Cohen, so. <laughs> it's, 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 it's going back quite a long way, but, you know, um, uh, obviously, I mean, you, you're the perfect person to ask. How much has football, how much has football changed uh, these days in terms of like the way it's played? Because what a lot, lot of City fans, I know people totally agree with this, and Steve actually. Um, you know, I mean, I, I just I just hate this inverted winger stuff. You know, and like so, so at the moment we've got a guy up front. I mean, he did manage to score on the weekend. I don't know what his strike rate is for the season, and I, I don't think he's a striker. You know, I just don't think he's a striker. But maybe he managed to score. Uh, Steve said, from, albeit from a from a free kick, but we we play this front three. And because Cohen, we got um, basically uh, a right footer on the left, and very much a left footer. I think he uses yeah. his right foot to find out where the touchline is. You know, uh, mm-hmm. he, he's got he's got no right foot basically. So and then whoever you have in the middle, there's there's no service coming in. Yeah. So yeah. there's really no width, and no one's ever going to get the byline. And how are they ever going to put the ball in the box for a striker? I'm guessing yeah. in your days, uh, you know, you, you I think you played predominantly down the left, if I remember, I think. Is that right? Well, I used to play mate, down the right. You play both sides, yeah. Right, down the right. Okay. But, yeah. uh, you know, obviously on the left as well. And well, Which um, foot were you using? Well, I'd use both, but uh, uh, predominantly right-footed. But yeah, I do yeah. think yeah. that 
you know, as you're saying, if you are uh, a left footer playing on the right, then it makes it difficult for the centre forward, you know, especially if it depends on the type of centre forward you've got. But if you've got a big centre forward who thrives on on crosses, yeah, then I think it makes it hard for them. Mm. You know, I think you need to at least, as the winger, be able to go the 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 uh, the other way and uh, attempt to to get a cross in because that will keep the defence honest for a start. And I suppose the whole point of a left footer on the right-hand side and vice versa is that they can then cut in and have a shot. But if you are so one-footed that that's all you've got, then it's easy to mark. You've got you you and and to prevent, you need to have the other option as well, just to free up what you want to do. And, and to back you up on that, Steve Wiggins has come in with a comment. Um, I appreciate you haven't seen a lot of City recently. Cohen, but wouldn't it be nice if the city was set tactically to win a game like like Pete said earlier, as soon as you saw the team news, you know, rather than contain? We've got three games to go. I take your point about the fact he wants to generate points in order to, uh, you know, give himself a, a, a better kind of uh, heritage, if you like, in his time at the club because we don't know. We, used to, we don't know whether he's here next season or not. No, nobody knows. But on the other hand, you know, if he wants to, um, it's unlikely, but if he was to say, you know, experiment a bit, maybe try putting people in, with the right feet on the right side, uh, you know, playing a bit more attacking, giving some of the kids a chance, you know, playing some nice football and giving the fans something to get behind, maybe that would also give him a, a case to argue for staying. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, you know, um, it comes down to, and, and, you know, as the fans, would you rather see a win inside? even if it's a little bit boring or whatever, or would you rather see um, a side yeah. that goes out, has really full of flair and everything, but loses? I mean, I know the ideal situation is that you have a side that's full of flair and goes out and attacks and wins, but if it came down between those two, which one would you prefer? Yeah, I, 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 it's, a, I mean, it's a great classic point, which I'm going to let Peter respond to in a second, but just the same, my, my point on it is, Honestly, with three games to go, I think I think you know I look at, I think of the fans who went up there to Millwall and the fans who travelled to like Steve, you know went to Birmingham, came back with, went to London and whatever. Um, in Steve's case, he lives in the Midlands, but still he does a hell of a lot of miles over over the season. And I just see such a defensive uh, ne negative thing. And when I went to watch uh, the most recent game, and I was there, there with my my daughter, and there were there were two kids on the bench going, um, Kian Ashford and Joel Colwell. Mm -hmm. And my, my my daughter's only twenty. She said, "Blimey, dad, they look about 14, You know, they were so young. But it was lovely about it was because they were down at the Canton end of the ground in 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 the, in the new setup at, at, at the stadium, and um, you could just see they were literally they were watching every kick, watching every you know watching every move. They could want to get on the pitch, want to get on the pitch, want to get on the pitch. Five minutes to go, sat on the bench again. Game over, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I just think if you, if you bring those kids on, Cohen, and you'll, you'll have an uh, opinion on this as an ex city player. Apologies, by the way, I put you on the wrong wing, but was 30 years ago in my defense, and I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could play badly on either wing, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, I just, I mem just remember, I remember uh, en enjoying you, seeing you, you play, but am I right in saying, do you, do you think, as a, 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 any club, never mind Cardiff City, you know, if you bring on the local kids and they're making a few mistakes, whatever the, the fans get behind them and they just love to see in the local kids on there you know to give them a game yeah give them a go yeah, yeah i think that um you know there was there's times where people were saying uh oh you know they don't have any affinity with the club and they don't feel for the club and they don't know what it means and all this sort of stuff uh and people seem to be you know i'm sure it, it wasn't true but people are better getting accused of perhaps just taking the money or whatever it might be. Now, if that was the case, surely it's better to bring on a youngster who is absolutely dying totally. to prove their point and will run around it. Because, you know, fan, fans just want effort a lot of the time. If you can get quality and effort, great. Who's yeah. going to run around and try absolutely everything um, to make a name for himself. But um, and maybe it's better like that. But you can't have a team full of those. No, no, you won't get anywhere. So, but yeah, and I think it, as has been said, a, a lot of it might boil down to simply the pressure that would be on on the manager. And if this pressure was 
was wasn't there if he knew he was there next week or whatever it might be or next year sorry then he is a little bit freer to 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 have a go and experiment and see is that yeah. will, how will they fit in next year yeah but remember um, if if you are under pressure to win every game or to win the games because you don't really know you know how it's going to pan out then you're not going to be playing those players. You're going to be no. playing what you consider to be your best side. Okay. Um, I was going to ask you something else, Emrys. It slipped my mind, which is probably just as well. Pete, one or two, I'm sorry about that. No, 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 no. It's great, Colin. It's great having you on, hearing you. Pete, do you want to come in? Yeah, I, I, I guess my point, I, I'll, I'll ask, I, I think Steve will have a view on this as well, because Steve sits about three rows in front of me at the ground. I think your view is probably the same as mine. I guess from my point of view, Colin, I'm, 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 I'm quite patient with Bullet, actually. I think I can see the bigger picture. And I think he should have another year, and I'd like to see him have another, couple, another transfer window to see what plays he can bring in that are his, because the ones he has brought in, which we know are his, have been good in Gutassi office and things like that. But I just do not see what the benefit is of watching a Josh Bowler, who I, who I've, who I think, to be honest, has been... Li- Hasn't put a performance in for a while, even on when on Wednesday when he scored. Isn't our player? Is on loan at Forest. Or a Ferdy Deju, you know when you, or a or even a Ryan Wintle players like that who we've got under contract. We know what they can, and more importantly, what they can't do. And I'd like to see Ashford have a go at front, Steve, because I can't see how we can be any worse than what we've had this season at front. And that's and I like Mate. I think Mate is a completely different player on the wing than he is a front. I think he's a danger. He's a yeah, player. I think I prefer him out there. Yeah, mm. but I genuinely think it's you know, bullet bullet will. I mean, we'd be a more dangerous team if we had Ruben Carwell playing, and we in that side, and we built around him now to the end of the season, and we had. We gave some of the younger players an opportunity. And it is going to be tough because, again, the temptation when you're playing Southampton on Saturday is to play a more experienced team. Yeah. Um, but Russell Martin has turned over this more experienced Cardiff team every time he's had them. How about we, the definition of madness and insanity is doing the same thing when it doesn't work over and over and again. So maybe try something different. Um but I don't know what Steve Thomas thinks, but I I, I think a lot of us fans are in that boat. Yeah, I think yeah, I, I agree with all that, Pete. I think if if we if we set up like we did against Ipswich, I mean, I obviously went to the Ipswich game, but I, I was I was very very pleased to get anything out of that game to to win it the way we did. Even if we lost that game, because yeah. we basically had a go, we'd taken the game to them. Absolutely. I wouldn't have been as disappointed as I was at the two games that Cohen mentioned he went to against Preston and Leeds, where we just didn't seem to turn up. Um, Hull, we turned up for 10 or 15 minutes or so until that terrible free kick that gave him the third goal. But if we set up against Ipswich, the, the way we did against Ipswich, not against Southampton, let's try going toe-to-toe with a team. Let's 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 start with somebody like Turnbull, who is going to be there next season because yeah. he's, he's signed permanently. Um, I think we, we, we need need to have a go. It's, it's not a, I come back to Cohen's point as well. I would much rather... See a dead boring game, we win it one nil with a goal off somebody's backside, and lose the game four three, five four, whatever, because that's not what they I I I I want to I want to see us win. Yeah. And and go and um uh, I don't know whether Cohen's seen either of the last two two games, but at at, at Birmingham, uh, we ended up with I thought it looked really good. It was Kean Ashford, by the way. He's one of those players. Uh, I don't know if you've seen Kean or heard of Kean Ashford yet, Cohen, but he's no. was he 17, 18 this kid coming He's through. a talent. Real he, talent. He, I, I think he's got. I really think he's got something about him. Uh, I just hope you know we don't do an Aaron Ramsey, and uh, you know a few million comes in and he disappears. I really think he's got something special. But when he came on, we ended up with him and Ruben and Turnbull. He was we signed for a couple of million, and between those three, the, the way they're playing the ball around, we started to look great, you know. And then um, I, mean, I thought uh, that's the, that's the way we're, we're going to go. But uh, then again, with Errol Bullet again ne- next match around, you know, he, he goes back to uh, he goes back to going down that safe thing. And I think his point is, Cohen. I don't know whether you you know whether whether you had this maybe Terry or I don't know. It might be one like this, you know, more more focused on not losing, not giving a goal away, keeping it tight, keeping it safe, rather than you know, let's, let's go for it, particularly at home. Yeah. Well. Uh, may maybe 
if you i can understand there's loads of managers nowadays who who you know keep what you've got type stuff what you yeah. start off with and see if you can nick one mm -hmm. um but and that's how a lot of teams play away from home i think at home you've got the you know these are the people who are who, who who you know who are paying the wages and there's a little bit more onus to attack and give them something to cheer and stuff like that and i saw i can't remember which game it was but i as i said i was disappointed with it was like almost like the attitude at leeds that they they were Against leeds and go for it and then when mm. when a tackle was made the crowd were actually cheering because there was a tackle yeah you know and i, I and as you were saying just the fact that prepared to go you know you it, regardless of the result that they were prepared to have a go and see what what they were made of mm. i think at home maybe just a slight shift but you know if your principles are your principles if you it, are defensive minded it's very very difficult to change but yeah. i think that uh, maybe a little bit for for the fans to get behind because then the place becomes much much harder place yeah. to play at because the fans are on your side on on your side and they're lifting the players and they're getting on the opposition's backs and all that sort well, of stuff the atmosphere you, is completely different then can, yeah. can i ask you a question steve yeah yeah I, 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 it's a bit you played in a in a, in, a, in an era Cohen, where and like that, that was my you were like say when you scored one of the first goals i ever saw a Cardiff city play scored a 3-1 win against warsaw and, do you remember that one and, it was well, um, away. Yeah, it I was do. home. It was. It was home. Oh, when I don't we remember relegated, that one. Yeah. Relegated Walsall, and um, <laughs> and and then we went down two weeks later, at Bury. But <laughs> I remember that one. Yeah. Yeah, but you went. You had. It's about the toxic atmosphere. Actually, you played in the era where Clemo was enemy number one as the chairman. Then we had Ricky Wright and the Eddie May era, which was some of the best times I can remember, even as a 12-year-old kid. You know, what's his name? Eddie May. That 92-93 team, still one of, still the team that ever promoted sides are judged against right now. We even, you know, even I think Cardiff fans of my era still look back on that one more positively than the ones we've got promoted to the Premier League got to, you know, because yeah, there's a yeah. real awakening, the junior bluebirds and all that. You saw it how how that can change, and then you you went in for Kumar, and that, that and you look at those stuff. That's like one end of the spectrum to the other, uh, and back to the other end. So you saw some of the worst and best times at Cardiff, where fans were literally protesting every week, or were going traveling to say Scunthorpe with seven thousand of us going there to see us win promotion, and then again protesting against the owner again. How how much of that went during that period were the players aware of? And have you got any stories about particularly uh, particularly the Clemo and Kumar is because for me that there was a protest that Steve will I'm sure about me, there was a protest every week um in those days, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think the Tony Clemo, I mean I he was at the club when I was there, but he couldn't have been there no, that not long. long. He that sold long. the club at the end, yeah. Yeah, so so uh, you know, I in terms of protests, I knew I knew that we weren't particularly um, sort of enamoured with him, but I wouldn't really know too much of the background, especially not coming from the area either. Um, with and, and I don't I don't think I don't think I was there with Kumar. I don't think so. When did he you, go? I think you left. I think you left. I think you left the season he bought the club and we had that Jim right. Cadman nonsense. Okay. Do you remember that, Steve? I do remember that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, was so, so I, don't, I don't know too much about, about, about that side of it. In terms yeah. of the 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 good the good uh, feeling you get when the side's doing well and when everybody uh, is 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 back in the club, you know, we you know the the uh, doubles year 92-93. I, I think that was actually um, Rick Wright's biggest mistake because he said, um, I'm going to keep the club for three years or whatever it might yeah, be, and then, and then I'm going or uh, whatever it might be. And he kept it for three years, and then it culminated in the thing. And then all he needed to say was, I'm going to go again. And he would have sold so many season tickets. Yeah. Right? But instead of that, 
And, you know, there might be reasons behind it. I don't know. But instead of that, it was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I might do this. I might do that. And it just it just killed it all. Um, and I think he stayed for a little bit. But I think the, the opportunity had been missed then. He just needed to say, right, on promotion, right, I'm going to go again. And and it would have just to carry that, through. That and I'm team, convinced. That team only needed two or three again. players, didn't it? It only needed... That team only needed two or three additions. Yes, yeah, yeah. we didn't need much more to go up again. Yeah, uh, I, 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 it's one. I Steve, Steve Thomas, yeah, or yeah. yeah. Can I can I come in? I, I'd forgotten that bit, Cody. I remember that we got promoted at Scunthorpe. Then we beat Real five nil in yeah. the in the World Cup final. Didn't you score two goals in that game as well? With yes, I did. Everything? You Stanley remember those? Was... Um, <laughs> and then and then of course, literally after that, a balloon pin bang. Rick Wright says he's going. And then, of course, we I remember sitting at home waiting for the news to come on because I think the start – was it the start of July that year? We didn't even know if there was going to be a Cardiff City the next season because Rick Wright said he was walking. And then, mm. and then, so then obviously, we, we did keep it together. But you, you're right. It was it was the, the wrong announcement. It was almost like, have we got a club at all at that, at that point as well? Yeah. Well, I mean, we went in Europe. You know, we, t- it would like, we went to Europe the next year. We went – I think we played um, – we, 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 you know, we, 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 yeah, I mean, Standard Standard Liege, Liege, maybe we, we played Standard Liege and Bird, Birdie scored within 30 yeah, seconds, didn't he? Yeah, and yeah. Um, woke him up. But I mean, it's like, you know, the club, the, like, don't I, that man, we, we went from winning that league, looking, beating Manchester City the following season to being, um, to them, to them being sort of like having Jim Cadman and a bunch of Clattons <laughs> pretending they ran the club, and it, and it was just like it must have been madness for you, Cohen, in the changing rooms, thinking that you know we, this is a this is a side that really could have pushed on that ninety two ninety three team really could have pushed on. I think. Yeah, yeah, I, I I felt that I felt it was an opportunity missed. You know, B- Blakey playing really really well, Carldale flying, and a good mix of uh, you know youth and experience. Um, yeah, I just I, I I I was disappointed that we couldn't hold it together. You know, we had Gavin Ward in goal and he went and yeah. then Blakey went and Gary Thompson and we Gary Thompson yourself were a bit experienced as well in the in in that midfield, you know. Well Gary Thompson, I always felt sorry for Gary Thompson because for such, he was a striker, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, he was a striker, but for such a you know, I don't think we really gave him a lot of service to tell the truth. Um, you know, the ball was pumped up from the keeper because we never, you know, it's a different game nowadays, you like pass it out from the back and stuff. But we used to go, back, and that would be the only time he would really be challenging for, for a ball in the air. It, very rarely do I think that we got the ball wide and knocked it in and he was challenging to try and score a goal. And so I don't think we used him to to the best of his ability. And he was a decent centre-half as well. So we got probably more out of him as a centre-half than a centre-forward. Yeah. We bring we bring Nigel, Nigel Harris has just just come in. He's uh, just, just done one of his uh, one of always his, his legendary I, furniture deal. Excuse deals. any mess behind yeah. me. We're having a the house is having a full makeover at the moment. So excuse any mess in the background. I show you me doing the ironing, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Will? Do, do you want to chat with Colin? Yeah, hi, Colin. How are you doing? Hi. All right, thank you, nice. Uh, it brings back great memories. Uh, I know Pete was there, you know, of those uh, happy times back in the early 90s and everything like that. Scunthorpe away, I think, for all the fans who were there that day, that, that that's one of those days you take to your grave, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, Are you yeah. talking about the um, bad times just now? I was saying to Steve earlier, I can always remember meeting you. Just by oh, chance. that was a bad time, was it? No, no, no. When we talked about <laughs> other owners, um, I, I met you in. Gatty Jacks and Cates, he went in there having a drink, and it was on the day that Rick Wright, if you can remember, gave the club away to the Junior Bluebirds. And that yeah. was, um, uh, to me, that was the downturn on that team that we built, we thought we could kick on. And it was a sign that Rick wasn't going to invest anymore, and that sent us into those years of turmoil. And I can remember walking up to you, buying a drink, saying, my daughter's now your owner. <laughs> uh-huh. but, uh, that, that was a strange old time, wasn't it? How did it feel as a player when that happened? <sighs> I don't. I don't know. Well, like I say, I, I, I'm pretty much one. Of, I'm just going to get on with it. 
and yeah. and and deal with what I can deal with, and uh, because you know all of that sort of stuff happens, you know, a long way away from the football pitch. Um, although it does affect it, but you know, I, my job doesn't change. Still, to go on the pitch and play as well as you possibly can. Yeah. So, so I just used to get on with it. I think. And I think that's absolutely right. It's a professional attitude, isn't it? But, but I think for fans that day when he gave the club away, you know, it, it, it built up something special, hadn't he? The crowds were back, the yeah. the atmosphere, the vibrancy was there. And it did just feel as like that was the day he was giving up and wanted to pass about that none, which he did say in fairness, he wanted to get Cardiff promoted and wanted someone else to sort of take the club on. And unfortunately, uh, we didn't at that time. But uh, such a shame. But it doesn't diminish the memories of what we had back then, which were special time support in City. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Cohen, I've got a question for you from Chris Hughes Jones. I'm gonna, I, I hope you don't mind. I'm just gonna do it publicly. I, I just, just, I'm just interested. It's nothing controversial, but a straightforward question. <laughs> but uh, Chris Hughes Jones, have have the club invited you for a visit on a match day? Yeah, yes, I have. Uh, I went. The, in fact, the 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 two times I've been recently, the Preston game and the, I think it might even have been the Leeds game. No, maybe not the least, but I, yeah. I've been to the match uh, invited by the club. And to be fair to to the club, you know, uh, you know, there's still quite a few people there. And if I wanted to go to a match, th then I could probably go and see it anyway. It's just I don't have the time. But, uh, yeah, um, the cl club are always very welcoming. I'm yeah. down there on, what day is it today? What? <laughs> Tuesday. Monday today. It's Monday today. Oh, Monday, yeah. Yeah, oh, Tuesday tomorrow, it? yeah. What day is it today? Monday. Monday. Oh, good, good weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, on it's Thursday, back, I'm down it? there because there's, um, th I think there's a, a sort of quiz night um, with, I think it's maybe dis some dis dis Cardiff Disabilities supporters or something, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Anyway, so there's a quiz night anyway. So I'm down there on Thursday. So I do get invited yeah. to the club quite often and try and get there when I can. Can you see the comment on the screen now? Because Chris goes on to say a walk around the pitch before kickoff would be fabulous. You know, you <laughs> You, you still you never you haven't done that I don't think have you? I, I uh, last one of the top, re recently when I was down there I did a sort of interview which was on the screen but uh, I don't know about a walk around the pitch with all the little kids <laughs> saying who's that then and, and why is he hobbling so no, it's much? Not, it's not about those little kids, Cohen's about us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you still I mean you're still really well thought of, Cohen. You know. Um, yeah. You know, you, I think you come across, a, which you, you undoubtedly are a, a humble and down to earth and you know, um, normal person. Yeah, you know, not, there's no, they don't see any sign of an ego there with you, but you're very well thought of at Cardiff City, and so many people remember you playing. One thing I wanted to ask you about it was with with that season. I'm, I'm sure Nigel and Pete and Steve have thoughts on this as well. Is it was you know, that, and that season we had, we had such a tiny squad. Yeah, didn't we? We had such a yeah. tiny squad, and um. And it seemed to be, I'm thinking of people like Derek Brazil, you know, because I mean, I, we, we, we've seen Derek on the show quite a few times and he, he's, he's a character. And it seemed to me like yeah. that, should, you know, maybe you can mention a little sailor, but I think about Derek actually as a player. Yeah. But, you know, it was like a, it was a it was a small squad, but there was a lot of character in it. And I think that was significant in how well, it, you know, it went. Yeah, there's a, you know, I think we're it's different days a different time where you know players didn't want to rest so much you know if, yeah. i mean my perf my yeah. perfect um week was when there was a a saturday and a midweek game because it meant you were hardly training so you know i'd, I'd go from game to game i'd be quite happy with that but uh yeah it was it might have been a smaller squad but it was different times and also it was a very adaptable squad because you know, if you had, if you look at me, wing, centre forward, full back, I've played. You look at um, Paul back, Billick, wow. who's a centre forward, yeah, ended up centre midfield. Nick Richardson, centre midfield, could play, yeah. ended up playing on the wing. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, Derek came as a centre half. Played full back right and midfield, back. didn't he? Yeah. yeah, right back, could play midfield. There was a lot of adaptability in there. So when we had the injuries, it was just like like daily missed a lot that season. Mm -hmm. um, I think he got uh, injured playing 
Middlesbrough, all that. I can't remember we got played injured against, but he missed a lot that season. I just went centre forward. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I don't know whoever it was, somebody else came in and went on the wing. You know, um, so yeah, it was. Um, there's a lot of adaptability, and there was a good team spirit as well, which goes T- a long way. Talking about talk, 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 that squad, um, uh, Steve. Talking about strikers, Pete. Let me just put a comment on the screen for you and 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 Cohen to react to. Uh, let's see what Cohen says about this. Uh, Cohen. <laughs> Is that Chris Pike saying that? <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Andrew Turton has always been a massive Chris Pike fan. <laughs> yeah, well, Pikey, P- Pikey, listen, you can, I know he's got a lot of detractors or whatever it might be, but twenty goals a season every year. Yeah, but he did what? Yeah, what 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 you're supposed to do in the hardest job? Put the ball in the net. So so you know, I mean, I used to run around like an idiot, and I'd quite happily do Pikey's. Pike is running around if he puts the ball in the net. You know, it's, it's about a partnership. You know, and Pike is not stupid. And I know he liked the to be the top goal scorer. And I, I, I'm i convinced he was very studious about the pace of the shot and all that sort of stuff. And I'm convinced that sometimes Pike used to put me wide so I had no option but to cross it to him. <laughs> so as he carried on being top goal scorer, if it was ever close, which it wasn't really, because he, he's a, he's a penalty taker and he's a goal scorer as well. So yeah, listen, Pike, Pike he, Pike, you know, he did, did well. Some people didn't particularly like him or whatever it might be for like whatever him. reason, but he would put the ball in the neck and net, and that's what it's about. What what would we kill N- N- Nigel and Steve for a yeah. twenty goal a year striker? Yeah. Uh, wow. I mean, you looked at look at it, look at him. I mean, Carl Dale is, will always be one my one of my heroes. I thought he, he, after you left Cohen, he scored goals which kept us in the football league, in my opinion. But um, you look at that; he was there, Stamp was there, Pike was there, and you were playing on the on the wing or a friend. I mean. We kill for that. I know it's a different level and different times, but I'd, I'd kill for the front four who were that capable, Nigel, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, I'll tell you a funny story about Chris Pike. Not the time I marked him playing football, we beat him and I, I marked him out the game. I'm not that one. Cardiff played QPR. I think you were at the club at the time, Cohen. We drew at Cardiff, went to a replay at QPR. And um, yeah. one of my few friends, I haven't got many football friends, but if by pure chance, Paul Parker, who plays for Man United in England, is a pal of mine and still is to this day. And he was playing with QPR at the time before he transferred to Man United and um, went up to Loftus Road. I think we lost 2-0 or 2-1. But Pikey run Paul Parker ragged that night and he was like the big next thing, wasn't he? And uh, I'm still dining out on that because he, he really <laughs> he, he showed his quality that night. He really was a good player, but more skillful than um, people gave him credit for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, he's quick. You know, decent in the air, quite quite brave. Two no in out because we have. When you look at our wingers, you know, the little bit getting inside. Yeah. Could yeah, I was saying what you give to have someone like Cohen in the city side, isn't it? When you've oh, got the um, yeah. the inverted winger as well. Um, yeah. I remember obviously a lot, a lot of talks about ninety two three season, but I remember when you first came in. Uh, is it the uh, 89 90 season, the one we ended up being, being relegated at the end of? Yeah. The uh, yeah. the way. The way you, you you and Chris Pike came into that side, I remember going to Fulham and see us winning five two there. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. Um, the, uh, the, the, some some of the games that season, although we ended up getting relegated, there, there were some tremendous me- memories that season. I think you 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 both you both if you take the compliment, you both kind of gave us hope that season. I mean, go back to Richard Davis's flag that says "It's the hope that kills you" on the bottom yeah. of it. it mm-hmm. It's um, it's uh, it, 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 the, the memories you gave from that season as well to, to, to give us the hope. I mean, at the start of the season, we thought, "Are we going to pick up any points at all? Are we going to go down with a record low?" We all we almost we almost managed to stay up. We needed to get something at Berry at the end of last season. Uh, that season, I remember yeah. uh, Chris Pike at the bar, I think, in the first few minutes, and then we ended up losing two 0 But um, yeah, yeah. Steve, Steve. Uh, as well Steve, as eight, could- nine, three, which people to concentrate on. The the eighty nine ninety season, um, I think yeah. you, you gave us some hope there, which which didn't quite come to fruition. But yeah, it was it was it was, it was good times. Steve, just to say, was that the game you said you saw Cohen score two goals and, and he doesn't remember them? Is that the one? No, that was a Port- Portsmouth. Uh, I think Portsmouth in the nineteen ninety ninety one season in the league. Well, I Cup. saw two. No, no, you, you, you one of the goals, Steve. Yeah. Talk about one of Cohen's equal, goals. I think you, you equalised. We, we drew the, the drew the home leg with Portsmouth one all. Then you, you equalised. Took it to extra time. Portsmouth then beat us in extra time. But I remember 
with being behind the behind the goal. I think you did like a, a back flick past the goalkeeper. You, you, the ball had gone beyond you, and you sort of flicked it off your heel in, in, in into into the net. And it, a wonder it, goal. It, it, your mo modesty that you don't remember that goal. So I particularly remember the, the little <laughs> flick. The goalkeeper was going the other way. I was probably trying to get out of the way of it. Tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I sit. I sit, I cannot remember that goal. <laughs> Which is which is strange. I do remember. Well, not even most. I can't remember the names of the kids half the time now. So uh, it's yeah. not no major surprise. It's an amazing thing, Cohen. Right? I don't know what what, you, what I'll ask you this, and I'm sure Nigel might want to come on as a piece. But it's really amazing to me. Uh, I've had it happen. I know Nigel's a massive music fan as well. It happens. It's happened to me with musicians. You know, I talked to a musician about a famous thing or some event, and just kind of changed my life. You know, which is amazing. And the same with you as a footballer. You know. We, we we so look up to you and we you know and we remember all this stuff and you gotta remember it you know it's a it's weird my, it's my it might be because that's what i was expecting to happen i know it's not mm. but it, that might that's what i'm gonna say i'm you know it's just a, a another back back heeled flick that went in loads of them happen all the time <laughs> it's, it's hilarious because we see it through our i think we see it through our various Spells of our life. It's not what football fans do. We see it through various spells of our life. And for me, that yeah. 92 93 team is my peak childhood. That 98 99 team is where I started yeah. drinking and met Nigel. You know, <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you know, you get, and and, and the Sam Hermann era was university and things like that. You, you, yeah. you and, and I, we forget for players, uh, although they're living their dream, it's a, it, is a, it is still a job, isn't it? I mean, but. Cohen, yeah. I, I'm interested in Cohen's attitude because he's, you know, he, when, when he was saying about he never really got involved in the back um, with the backstage politics at City, and he just got on with his job. And that's what a lot of City fans loved about you, Cohen. Actually, is you you were always seven out, out of ten at least. I, I can't Not remember. Not Rob Phillips. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> well, that's Rob Phillips for you, isn't it? You know, Rob was a lot harsher well, in Rob those days than he is now. He, I he know. Griffiths well, Five, it was. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, but you know, as fans loved you, and and I, and I think, I think it's the, I don't know whether it's because you came from non-league and you just got on with it. Catering, we, had, we, yeah, had a catering lot, yeah. we had a lot of players at the time, and I'm sure they're friends of yours. Who, I mean, who 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 really who who weren't performing like you were in that late in your late, latest spell at the club, and, and I want to ask. How did you leave Cardiff? Because you went. I thought that I thought the club were very harsh on several players who had given good service from that 92 93 team in 94 95 after we got relegated, and that you ended up playing for Barry. And I, I thought you should you could have still been contributing for us when considering we were finishing third bottom in the whole football league that year. So, yeah, what happened there? Well, I I felt I was hard done by, I've got to be fair. Um, but uh, Eddie May was, was manager and he was leaving to go to Barry. Yeah. Um, and Rick Wright was still there. And it was bas basically, I suppose, at that stage, you know, I was 32. And, and, I, and maybe they felt that they could pay a youngster less. I don't know. I thought I... Thought I, I I wouldn't say deserved to be to to have uh, had a longer contract, but I think I think that uh, they got rid of me too early. To tell the truth, it wasn't a case of wanting to go; it was a case of they they got rid of me. My contract was up, and they just said we're not renewing it. Um, I hung on because um, I didn't because I, I did. I felt that I still had more to to offer, and I think it took a couple of years for them to get another decent winger in. To tell the truth. Um, but uh, I hung on to see who the manager was and see, you know, if um, if I could get back, I suppose, to a certain degree. But oh, we um, did get a decent winger in, Colin. We got Jimmy Gardner in, who was one of the worst wingers in the history of the club. So, like you were saying, <laughs> yeah, I, said it, I said it took a little while, to get in there. but um, yeah, I, I hung on just to see who was going to come in and uh, yeah. you know, deliberately didn't sign for anybody, and then I thought I can't hang on anymore. And then, so I signed for Barry and then uh, Kenny Hibbert come in, I think, and oh. who was from Walsall as well. And I always played well against Walsall. So yeah. he, I think 
if he'd have signed a week before, if I'd have hung on for another week, week then I might have had a chance because apparently one of the first things he asked was where I was. Uh, but too late then. Two, I should, two, and, sorry, go on. No, I should. I should. I should have had something written in my contract with Barry to say that if a club yeah. comes in, yeah. you know. But that's, yeah. that's you know, it's, it's, it's funny. I was Barry as well with Rick Wright, you know, with 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 the Barry Pleasure Park and all the rest of it. Whether that's the yeah. connection at all, I don't don't know. I <laughs> wanted to ask you about two people, which I'm sure um, I'll bring you back in now, Steve. Sorry, um, two people. I want. It's just when, when a player comes on, we just get lost in it, don't we? Um, two two people to, to mention. Um, a few words on uh, Nathan Blake, maybe. From your point of view, for me, hmm. Blakey. Listen, I mean, listen. He's had a, a good career, um, and you know, I, knowing what Blakey is like, I, it seems wrong to say. I think he 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 could have done I a agree. lot more because yeah. he's so talented and has got absolutely everything. Yeah. That. Um, and then got, went on and played for Wales and played in the Premiership and all that sort of stuff. Hmm. But it's for me, I, I just look at what he's got and, I, uh, and what he had and think, you know, perhaps he could have done more. I don't know, which seems really harsh and he might hate me for it and probably beat me up next time he sees me. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, Blake, Blakey was absolutely a class player. He was um, very good for me. Made, made, made his debut as a left back. Yeah. It was a hell of a centre half. I hated it when when he, he was marking me as a centre forward and uh, as a centre half because he, he was strong, he was quick, he was good in the air. You know, you'd normally look for a little chink somewhere along the line. And he didn't have it. No, you know? he was so stylish as well, wasn't he? You know, you always yeah. you know, just you know, yeah. you knew when he entered the room. So I, you know? I remember his day. He was at um, Bristol Rovers at Twerton Park, That's right, and yeah. I think we had Ray. Ray Daniel, Ray Daniel was left back at the time. He was injured yeah. and there was no announcement about um, who this player was that came on. And we just had no idea who he was until we read it in the papers on the following Monday. <laughs> but he had, yeah. he had a great game that day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, St Steve. I'll come back to you then, and obviously, you know, you want to chat with Cohen. Uh, I'll I'll, I'll, lead, I'll lead you in, Steve, with us um, your thoughts on uh, a certain person, and then Cohen, uh, Eddie May. Anyway, should be remembered for the uh, 92 3 promotion. Uh, I think I remember being uh, uh, the only time I ever saw that the fans kind of turn on Eddie was at Wick Wickham Wanderers away the following season, where um, the, uh, half the crowd had sort of turned against him. But you've you got to remember him for 92 3. Can I just come back? I've just been doubting myself with Cohen not remembering that goal. I've rather anorakly <laughs> looked up that, that game against Portsmouth in 19. <laughs> 90, and you did score the equaliser goal. It's there in front of me now. Also, also you scored our goal in the home leg against them as well. Oh, did I? Oh, you remember that either? <laughs> did I? We, we do the one all time. Three, three one after extra. I was particularly remember because I thought you'd gone too far and you sort of turned around and you back heeled it over the goalkeeper. I do remember that. So it's a, a sign of your modesty again, Cohen, that you don't remember that. But I also remember the. Um, or old age. <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> First goal, first goal at Scunthorpe in that famous game that Pete Pete's mentioned. Um, you, yeah. you, you sort of I remember that le leaping salmon like headed it in. I remember that game particularly because one of my friends who may well be watching tonight um, was uh, said that we went up there. We, all, we we had both ends that day, and we said where we we're going to meet afterwards. He said, "Let's meet in the centre circle." And sure enough, we did meet in the centre circle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was one of the greatest away games I've ever been to as a City fan. Uh, in terms of the experience, uh, Cohen, I know we probably talked about it before, but um, as, you know, as a player, to turn up, Scunthorpe's not down the road, you know? To yeah. turn up at Scunthorpe, I know it was a big game, but, you know, everyone, the, pa the pantomime horse on the pitch and all the rest of it, everyone dressed up, you know, we took over the whole ground. I think, Eddie, I, th I think, was it Rick Wright said, thanks for lending us your, your, your ground? What was it actually yeah. like to be a Cardiff City player amidst all of that? Yeah. It, it wasn't even... Um the game the you know it was like the way up and yeah. you know from like two hours mm -hmm. away from the ground all you could see was cardiff fans driving up there with all the fancy dress on uh, uh, and all that sort of stuff you know it was um it, it, well, it was re ridiculous experience you know and you know it it, it makes you realize it makes you realize how much 
football means to 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 to, to, to these people. I mean, you, you, yes, we're doing it as a job, but or fortunate enough to be getting paid to 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 do what you'd probably be doing anyway. But you know, some of these people, you know, this is a significant significant expense out of their weekly pay packet that is being spent on football to go and watch Cardiff and stuff like that. And, you know, I think if if more professionals, if they're not already aware of it, were aware of that, then it might make a, a little bit of a difference to to them realising how lucky they are to be in that position. One thing to ask you about, Cohen, as well, off the back of what you just said, lovely comment there, by the way, from Chris for, for Steve, um, is in terms of, I suppose, then and now, I'll give you a good a good example. Uh, Ninian Park in those days for a while, I was I was I, with my much missed Phil Suarez involved in, in the PA at, at the at the ground, and, and then after the game, you go into the uh, the players' lounge. You know, there was not you know there was like wasn't a, there was a lounge you could just go in and have a drink yeah. with the players. You know, and you yeah. could just you could just associate with them, and yeah. you can have that kind of conversation. But that's another thing that's that's, that's kind of gone. Have you got any kind of recollections of how you were treated by? City fans, when you're out and about, you know, away away from matches. Yeah, listen, I've I've been very lucky. You know, I've never had any any problems with the city fans at all. Mm. You know, uh, when I first moved down, um, I didn't really know. I'm, my wife said I wanted a house, a new house. That that was the only the only direction I was given. So uh, there was a new. I can't remember what there, there was new flats or new houses being built just up the road from Ninian Park, um, uh, near Bessemer Road, somewhere down there. I don't know what the thing is called there. City Gardens. Oh, yeah. City Gardens. Yeah, I, used to, I used to live there. I used to live there. And, I, yeah. and I thought I'm not, yeah. I'm not going to live there because if I'm having a bad game, I, close, I don't yeah. want bricks thrown through yeah, my windows yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So I deliberately moved out of the city, yeah. um, and. I thought I was getting away from it. I would move right into the valleys in the middle of it all. So, you know, it didn't really work. But I've never had any any problems with fans at all. They've always been really, really nice, nice to me. There was one day I was in the house and these two huge blokes, huge, pulled, <laughs> pulled up outside my house and got out there. Kind of thought, oh, my God, what's going on now? And they come and knocked on the door. So I sent my wife, obviously. So, <laughs> well done. So they came and knocked on the door, and I thought, "Oh my god, I'm going to get beaten up here or whatever." And they just said, "Can we have your autograph, please?" Uh, and I thought, oh, "I was so happy to give them my autograph." So uh, yeah, so uh, the fans have been fine with me and really good. No, never had any problems. Do you have any thoughts at all? So, uh, sorry, it's a, a question just in my mind now. Uh, Pete, come in on this by all means. Um, Cohen, just think between Ninian Park, you know, okay, and I'd seen better days, la la la, yeah. But for me, it was just my my spiritual home from when I was a kid. Really special place to me. Uh, compared to the ground now, which is just like much like any other, you know, purpose built concrete stadium, really. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts me, on Ninian as a place, you know? Um. Loads and loads of fans said I love Ninian Park, you know, you know, you know, because because of the affinity that they've always had for it, and perhaps went there with their parents or whatever it might be. For me as a player, I and the service of Ninian Park is pretty good, or was pretty good. I've got to be fair, um, but for me as a player, I would much rather be playing at the new stadium now every week because i know the surface is going to be better okay okay um yeah. so i'm uh, not the atmosphere or anything like that and that i suppose they're playing in front of bigger crowds as well because you know i played in front in ninian park with like 1500 people there and stuff like yeah. that and because it was a big ground it's really it, it, you know i never used to look at the at, at, at the crowd because it's it's a bit demotivating to go out and yeah see it empty so um but in terms of surface and the the amount of people that get in now i'd rather be playing at the at the new stadium and it's nothing to do with the ground it's just all about the surface because i needed a good surface to play on and you know my my 
my form was like the, with the with the weather. It'd be good at the beginning and good at the end of the season, and then a massive chunk yeah. in the middle. Mm. When the pitches are rubbish, then that's probably when I would struggle. So I'll bring Pete and Steve in because we're getting towards the end. But that that's really interesting, uh, Pete and Steve, actually, isn't it? Because, you know, our kind of, you know, rose-tinted spectacles, Ninian Park, you know, really special to us. The things we remember about what Cohen did, but, you know, he doesn't even remember doing them. It just says it all about the, the massive gap between us as fans and, and professional world of football, Pete, yeah? I think to be fair to Cohen, the, like the first, like I said, that first season I went, it was only the Bob Bank Terrace. It was all terrace then, and the grandstand, and Tupper grandstand that was open because the club had thought, couldn't afford to open any of the other ends. Grange End wasn't open, um, and and the canter stand was wood. So, I mean, if you're, you, it's totally understandable when you hear him explain how demotivated that is. But on the flip side, Cohen, it must have been absolutely brilliant when you're playing in front of 22,000 people against Manchester City. What a and game that was. The place is, is rocking. Yeah, this, listen, it's always nice to be playing in front, in front of a big crowd. That's what you want to do. I mean, if you asked me to go and sing in front of two people, I wouldn't fancy it. But to go and play in front of a big crowd at Ninian or at the new stadium... I love it. I would love it. I love the crowd coming. Some of those crowds where we had eight, nine thousand against Swansea. Yeah. So, um, it's been much better than when we've had twenty-two thousand now. This, you know, um, it, it's it's a weird thing. And, um, but players always said Joe Ledley always said to me, Steve, about you know what you don't see about Ninian Park is like Joe loved Ninian Park, but one of the things he said to me when he was playing was the showers are not very really good. You know, it's not, you know, I mean, it, it's not, and players like that comfort, don't they? And yeah, um, so I, I get it. But for me, you give me a choice between a pack New York Park and a pack out seat stadium. There's no, there's no competition. Yeah. From the fans' it, perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Nearly part was special when it was full. Steve, we're, we're kind of well running. We've got Cohen with us. Probably over running. It, it, it was very special, but like Cohen said, I've been in crowds down there as sub two thousand yeah. for uh, for league games, and it's uh, it, it wasn't very nice. Yeah, the uh, on, yeah, interesting from from Michael there about Nin Ninian Park toilets. I don't know where it came came from, but there's there's, there's a picture of the <laughs> legendary toilet on 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 I think on Facebook or some Instagram, whatever. And of people doing what they do in a toilet. Why would somebody take that photograph? Is is is, is the question. Obviously, we all remember how how bad, bad the toilets were. But I, I think, think toilets. I think toilets was a bit of an exotic description for what we had. As Danny Baker once said about about Millwall, he said, "I'd rather go to the toilet." He didn't use that term. In the hole in the, hole in the ground. It, as long as we have a defence that can clear a corner. I think that, that, that that's what yeah. that's what we're after. But again. Uh, one one of my friends worked on the maintenance at Indian Park towards the end, and he said it's a lovely place. We've all got great memories there, but actually, it's held together by sellotape. So yeah, we, yeah. we did need to get out of it in the end. Yeah, um, uh, we're, we're we're right at the end, and there's a, a lovely comment, which is a nice way to end. Um, uh, so, Cohen, thank thanks ever. It's been great chatting with you again. It's been great, lovely. Thank you so much for doing it. And no, you, you do need to do the thing where you do need to come on the pitch before the before the game. We need, you know, <laughs> that, that, does, that does need to happen. Yeah. It does need to happen. We're I not even going to get. Yeah, it'll happen. It'll happen. Uh, bring a tennis racket or whatever, you know. Um, <laughs> but the, the, the comment I wanted to show you here, it's a lovely comment, um, you know, not to embarrass you, but Chris Hughes Jones, what a cultured and pleasant person Cohen is. Pleased to hear from him. So, and I think that probably echoes the uh, the thoughts of a lot of people because you come across really, you know, really well and uh, amiable and polite and humble, which, which is not unlike unlike the other members of the panel. But there you go, kind of everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Steve, Steve, he need, he's humble, but he played over 200 games for our club, and um, and and a lot of us remember him very fondly. For and, yeah. and as I said, well, well, one thing's for sure, we remember it more than Cohen does. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for the memory of the call at Portsmouth. Thanks, guys. Great <laughs> Thank show. You Thank you again, Cohen. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.